Okay, so uh, as a final video I will talk to you about the mechanics behind Pilip and at the end of this video I'll give a short demo with uh, two devices. So the whole goal of Pilip was to design a software that was completely cross-platform and for that I used a programming language that would more or less work on multiple platforms. I did. I chose for. I chose Python, and uh, every installation of Python comes with uh, TK. TK is the GUI library that I use to build all of my applications. Now, a GUI is a graphical user interface. It looks a bit tacky and outdated, but it's the easiest to install as there's really nothing to it for the users users of my uh, software. Aside from Python code, I use some OS-specific instructions for Windows and Linux. These OS-specific instructions are called upon by the Python code and are used to, for instance, open a text file or shut down a machine. The hardware that I used was uh, quite simple. I use one or more nodes and one or more servers. Uh, now the difference between a node and a server is this. A server is a device that is going to listen for incoming packages. Those packages are analyzed by the server and are printed or displayed on the screen. So printing to the screen is the same as displaying something on that screen. The nodes are the computers that are available for the public to use. These nodes can be used to browse the catalog or to send the package to the server. What you can do is you can use one server for the entire library or you can use one server per floor or per department. If you're doing this you have to configure multiple servers and you have to ensure that each of those servers have a unique IP. Secondly, you will have to make multiple images for the nodes that refer to that IP. I'll come back to that later. First of all, let's look at the diagram that uh, is valid for a one server setup. So I have a server here and I have five nodes here. There is a router and it assigns the IPs to all the nodes and there's a catalog. Now this catalog is external um, and it is going to depend for every library. First, let's connect all of these devices. Now, the blue lines here are uh, Wi-Fi, so wireless, or Ethernet, or wired connections. The same goes here. Now, there is also a catalog. Now, this catalog isn't physically connected to the router in most cases. It's There's actually a bunch of computers in here, but I've simplified it. This libwide.ini is one of the configuration files and it is configured only once and then that configuration is cloned together with the entire image and distributed to the rest of the nodes and every node is going to read the content of the same libwide.ini file there are also device.ini files and you have to configure this for every node so due to the physical restraints of my screen I only had a place to put two of these text boxes but in reality every, world, every single node has a device.ini with unique name location and description combinations. Let's put it to the test. Let's come up with a pretty clear example. Let's just imagine that the IP of my server is 192.168.137.131 and that's a static IP. You will learn how to set this up. That IP is stored inside of the libwide.ini file. It's here. There's also a password stored in here and the URL for the website. That's the catalog. The device.ini file is configured for every node. So this node here, it is called Bellerophon. Apparently it's near cabinet 3 and it's a Raspberry Pi. This is a good example of how to describe your nodes. A bad example is here. Apparently this device is called Chimera. It's indoors and it's a computer. Yeah, who would have guessed that? Now, 
Let's just imagine that on one of these devices somebody asks for help. In other words, they click the Ask Help button of the PLIP interface. That's the interface that's going to be available on every node. Let's take an example for the bottom node, this one. What it's doing is this. First it's going to read inside the libwrite.ini file for the IP address that it needs to send a package to. In this case it's 192.168.137.131. Then it's going to read all the variables in the device.ini file. Its name is Chimera, it's stored indoors and it's a computer. It's then putting that into a sentence and that sentence is then packaged, compressed together with the IP, sent to the router, the router reads the IP and it sends the entire package to the server. And that server is then going to analyze the package and it's going to print out the help message. We'll see that in action at the end of this video. Now what happens if someone wants to browse the catalog? <coughs> Well, this is quite simple. There's only one variable that has to be read, and it's the URL of the catalog. It's read from the libwrite.ini file by the node, it goes to the router, the router knows from, okay, this is a URL, so the node is going to be redirected to the external catalog. And once again, in reality, there are a bunch of computers in here, in between here, but I've simplified it for you. Let's take a look at another scenario, a multi-server setup. In this scenario we have two servers and each of these servers have a static IP. The first server IP is 192.168.137.101 The second is 192.168.137.202 What you'll have to do is, of course, you'll have to create two of these servers and you have to create two images We'll do that in a cloning process. And you have to create one image where the divide where the libwide.ini file redirects to the first server IP, and you have to create a second image where the libwide.ini file refers to the second server IP. In other words, you have to configure one image for each server. So I have again five nodes, this time two servers, a router and a catalog. And let's uh, call one group the blue group and the other group the green group. And let's see how they are connected. First of all, all of the devices are connected to the same router. Now in reality you could use a second router and there's really nothing, uh, no technical uh, challenge to this. But in this diagram I chose to connect them to one router. And you have a blue group that's connected to the blue server. So the top three nodes are in the same department as this server. And we have a green node. We have two green nodes that are connected to a green server. All goes through the same router. Now, just as before, every single of these nodes have a device.ini file that stores three variables. The name, the description and the location of the node. Once again, due to the physical constraints of my screen, I didn't have place enough to put all of this information. Now, if one of the blue nodes should ask for help, it's going to read this IP 192.168.137.101 together with the dev device.ini variables that are specific for that node. And just as before, that's going to the router, the router is going to read the IP and it's going to send it to the blue server. That blue server is then going to analyze the package and is going to print error message to the screen, or print the help message to the screen. Same applies for the green nodes. The only difference is that this one is going to read the other IP, 192.168.137.202, goes to the router and from the router it is then printed to the server. In other words, every node has its unique device.ini variables and these are needed to identify the device properly. Aside from that, every node has libwide.ini variables. And these variables are going to be the same for all of the nodes in the one server setup 
and in an end server setup there will be n amount of configured images and in those images of course you have configured the libwide.ini file a little bit differently each time what is different? the IP that's all all the rest is going to be the same now images uh, what are they? well they are just like clones what is being done when cloning an image is you spread the same content over multiple devices and it's a easy and efficient way to um, ensure that every single node is configured in exactly the same way and uh, just to repeat myself you use one image in one server setup and you use n images in an n server setup whereas n relies to of or is connected to the amount of server so one image per server and that's all. In the next part of the video I'll show you a quick demo. Okay so now we'll see uh, PLEAP in action. First I'm going to launch the two computers with uh, the circuit breaker. And uh, the screen on the left is the screen from one of the nodes. The screen on the right is the screen from the server. Now the two devices are connected on the same uh, Wi-Fi network. They are connected through uh, a network I created on my laptop. And I use that network to uh, record the screen of the server. So I'll start with that. Okay, so... Um, First of all, let's take a look at the interface for the PLEAP nodes. There's an option that says Browser Catalog, it's the left top option. The right top option says Ask for Help, and then at the bottom there are three options as well. First one for closing PLEAP, the middle one for rebooting the entire device, and the third one to shutting the device down. Now the three, the three options at the bottom, they are elevated functions, and they require uh, the administrative master password. Let's start by browsing the catalog. So I just click it and now the Raspberry Pi is reading the content from the uh, leapwhite.ini file. It's then assigned by the router to the correct uh, external address. In my case it's the website that's hosting everything uh, and as I said this website is going to be online for about three years. And now close this. Now the second button that's uh, usable by the public is the ask for help button. Let's tap it. And um, now the server says that uh, a message has been received at uh, 11 o'clock and there's an issue on machine Bellerophone with location uh, near cabinet 3 and description Raspbian node 1. So someone from the staff can go upstairs or wherever that device is stored and can uh, address the issue. If the issue is addressed, you will then click OK. And now it says on the server that the issue has been resolved. Now, this kind of communication between a server and a node, it can be used by placing the node near a help desk where, uh, there's not, where, there, where there is no staff at all time. In other words, uh, near the department for long-term storage or whatever. And if the server then receives a message that, hey, there's someone there and he needs your assistance, then someone can go to that location. Or if just someone has an issue, they can't find a book, or they have a question or whatever, they, then, they just simply click Ask Help and somebody can go resolve the problem. And that's it. Thank you very much.